right. Uh... Now, I was thinking of giving everyone bucket helmets so they can go in and get some water, you know? <laughs> and wooden armor so they can float if they fall in the water. Come on, the Joker, think with me here. Get it done. Flotation devices are already being produced. They will be have ladders which can be filled and can see the armor. You have 16. Get one more. You're a, you're a strong fellow. You can swim, can't you? I can, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although, don't, um, don't, don't get knocked out. Um, why are you... Did you lose a bet? What do you think is going to happen if we, if we lose? Hopefully they don't order the execution of the survivors. I doubt they would. It'll be very destructive. Um, yeah, we can't I'm lose the... tomorrow. We've got Magnus on our no, side. No, I'm I'm talking with this guy alone <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in no. front of the man. You just, you just hear them. There's still spontaneous <laughs> celebration. Uh, well, hey, the reason I'm here. Yeah. Just as a as a quick as a quick sort of observation. As I understand your historical record with this in this arena. It is more predicated on a single win and no losses than it is based off of like a long winning streak. Yes? In the arena. My arena was since I was I was this big. I've been fighting since I was a child. I kill everything. I'm still here. It means I didn't lose nothing. Stupid joker. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you do your part. I'll make sure they come. I'll make sure our side wins. All right. Um, keep the pale right alive. Focus on saving those he likes. Right. All right. Do your part. I'm fairly certain my part is done. I'm just going to come and enjoy the show. <laughs> Uh, hilarious. <laughs> Joker's joining us! <laughs> what? No, no, he's not. <laughs> Alright, Phineas collapses near the end of the day from creating all those uh, uh, those bladders. They are delivered to the men. Um, and the, he's told to just put them under the breastplates of their of their le leather cuirasses. Yeah, let them um, know how to use them. Yeah, they, they've got a, like a, like a, a bamboo spout. You just blow into them and, and, tie, and tie it off and, and you've got a big, like, floating bladder he's got like four st two straps around each of them to kind of crisscross <clears throat> so you can hold on to oh. the bladder um also uh nets i want i want to make nets with uh with two hooks on their end so we can throw them on either side of the boat if anybody falls in it's easy for them to climb back up i don't okay. know how high so magnus is. you go you, you go down and you go down into the um uh into the uh basement you you uh, you have the right to go and look at the armory. You you were provided with the armory key, although you get some really curious looks as to why you're going down in the armory. And the door is actually slightly ajar. And you go down, and it's fucking empty. There are no weapons in your armory. Oh fuck! A choker! <laughs> Yes, Magnus. <clears throat> We've been robbed. <laughs> where's our armor? Where's our where's our weapons? All of the weapons will be on board the boat. Please try not to let it be it burned and sink. Whose stupid idea was that? Please don't let it burn and sink. <laughs> So, okay, what do we have? Do we have a spear? Is there an inventory or a manifest of some variety? <laughs> do we have <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, they're, they're basically all but your training weapons have been left behind, and there is some armor. Uh, give me a d4. Four is high. Magnus might actually, because he's a gladiator, be able to like switch up his armor if he wanted. No. Nope. Um, the best thing in here is a chain shirt. Okay. All right. Um, Quick question. Yep. Give or take, how much is our armory worth? A uh, few thousand gold pieces. What an asshole. 
it's so like a, a few, it's like uh, a three year old uh, Honda uh, Civic. You know? three, two or three talents. Each talent is worth a thousand gold pieces. So it's, Imperial it's, it's talents. A, it's a 2014 <clears throat> Honda Civic. That's what it's worth. <laughs> okay, do I know we have. Okay, so we at least have a net. We can at least have a net get. So two grappling hooks and a net and get somebody who knows how to tie a rope. That's going to be their primary <clears throat> job. Get in there, build the net, okay. toss it on one side of the boat. Um. There like, is I'm assigning guy. jobs to people. Yep, there's You're one guy There's one guy who is able to jury-rig a net with, with hooks on it. Okay. Um, what we're going to do... So, do we know Do we know that they're going to be, like, spewing oil and, fi like, basically a flamethrower on us? Is basically that's what's going on? That is the plot so far, yes. <laughs> that has been the topic of two games, correct? <laughs> No, no, no! It's gonna be so. Is the is the boat? Question: Is the boat already sabotaged, like full of oil or something? Or you were told that um, that the other boats have oil rubbed into the wood so Fuck. that they will catch easy, because they they want to make a spectacle. They want they want to uh, not fail their prints by uh, the reenactment of the bat the Battle of Seguine Tears. <clears throat> uh, do the boats have sails? Don't know. We don't know. Boats of the era would have had sails and and rows, uh, rows. rows yep. So we don't like we don't know. Um, once things are settled here, Ashoka is going to go back to the, the where the masters are, and he'll just take a peruse around Magnus's room to see if there's anything that looks <laughs> particularly interesting. <laughs> Magnus, what, what what personal effects that you're that are not your armor and arms? Do you have anything? Um, You're religious might, accord, right? <clears throat> yeah, I might have a hidden. Yeah, okay. So you find you find a small shrine. Like you actually open up a drawer and uh, move some blankets, and there's a there's a a wooden carving of some sort of strong god. Knowledge, religion, DC fifteen. You'd know its cord. I... Some stupid human thing. There's some burnt offerings around it, like little chicken bones, and I might like, have. <clears throat> I just imagine the Cordites are just at like <laughs> at Hooters eating chicken wings. <laughs> so I'm gonna put under treasure. I'm gonna put uh, uh, one wooden statuette cord. of cord, and it's yep. worth probably five gold pieces. But most of my money goes into weapons. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have. Uh... <clears throat> my weapons on me, so that would be... I, I don't think you're allowed your weapons on you. I'm not allowed my weapons on me. Nope. <sighs> you're glad he did out, son. <laughs> I don't know why right. he was... <laughs> right. <laughs> Toa and Freya. Hmm, who else do I trust here? Nobody. Good stuff. Well, you've got the key to the armory. You could stick them in the armory and close the... And close the... You could give them to Ashoka. Ashoka would never sell them after you die. Anus face. <laughs> are you locking up your saved weapons? You, or are you leaving the them, when those three behind orcs somewhere? came to try to kill you? Sorry? Are you locking them up? Um, who else has access? To, uh, every, like A lot of people have access to this place. Yeah, I can, I'm going to leave them in my room. Okay. So you you return you leave your you leave your warriors that evening after some some good training and you return to the apartments of the masters. Um, I'm thinking of putting up the uh, if there are sails to put up the sails with something on them with wet or whatever on in front of the ship with like oars. I'm trying to think of like putting a frame of wooden of a uh, anything just to block that crap. Okay, so I, Magnus spends a, a, an evening, like the rest of the evening after training with his men, um, kind of furtively thinking of tactics. Uh, he wants a large adamantine umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Ashoka uh, is, uh, is able... Yeah, you hear Magnus returning. Okay, I'm... I will not be in his room when he comes in, obviously. Right. <laughs> uh, you do get um, Phineas to uh, identify the potion, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's a potion of Cat's Grace. Awesome. 
You've got the potion of aid, and how are you divvying up the stuff with Magnus? Uh, what are they? Are they? Well, we give him stuff that he's allowed to take into the thing. So potions. I don't know. Well, you probably could get away with a potion. Um, well. First off, I'm going to take 25 gold pieces back. <laughs> um, I got, I'm just going to take that. Uh, you you get the weapons. I don't give a shit about the weapons. Um, okay, I'll cut and paste the weapons onto... Okay, so you're getting the weapons, I'm getting the money, and do you want to Rochambeau for the... For the, for the potion, <laughs> rock paper scissors, not the, not the dick punching kind. <laughs> Just the cuffs. <laughs> Magnus would win um, that one. <clears throat> he would prefer the cat's grace to the aid, but I'd like both. Because <laughs> I'd be like, look, 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 look. <laughs> all right, uh, d twenty to see who picks first. Yeah. Okay. So you guys draw straws. Yeah. Consider considering you've got roll dice or something like that. Crap! And I took yep. thirty yeah, yeah, gold no. pieces. <laughs> no, I just want to survive. Uh, I understand that, but I don't want to waste a bunch. Of, I don't want people to drink the treasure. Okay. Roll roll a d twenty. <laughs> Three. Okay. Which one do you want? I'll take cat's grace. Okay. I'll take the aid. Okay, I'll cut and paste the one onto Magnus because I was already there. Okay, and then I'll take, I'll do the rest. Magnus can sell the weapons and get more potions. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't need all the weapons. Although he is a warrior, he may want his slashing <clears throat> and bludgeoning. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh... So who does Magnus know here that he can like? Hey, if I don't come out of the like, you know, take this might take my crap <laughs> like. Who do I know here for a long time? So, um, you're a warrior from the north that every once in a while the coarse lands do uh, rebel and they, the, the Imperium has to send soldiers up to defend. You're an unruly people. So you've been fighting uh, correctly most of your life. Your, your gladiatorial days were really short because you fought under the Hilt's banner and then, uh, and then got hired by this, uh, by this house. Um, you weren't a slave. You've never been a slave. Um, um, do you know anyone in town? What did you say when I said, asked about, uh, do you have any family ties? It sounds like all of your, your family is oh, dead. Is dead. It runs my weapons. <laughs> my weapons are my family. Um, you would be able to, um, um, probably donate your weapons to the, to the faith of the, of Cord. That might be an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that's not something like uh, like he would do. Um, he would he's going to choose the uh, there are people, axe. there are servants around here that could write a letter, which would effectively be your last will and testament. Yeah, he's uh, what he's going to do is he's going to bond with a with the battle axe, the masterwork battle axe. My bond means he's going to name it. Uh, he's going to name it, and he's going to well, he's going to name it Magnus. And he's gonna give, and he's gonna basically pour three hit points worth of blood over it, <laughs> like, like. Okay, you 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 blood yourself with your axe, and you you call your own. So axe I can heal the name. next day overnight, so I can heal. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? All right. So I have. There's I a reason have... why it was three and not four. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. So you've named your battle axe after yourself. <clears throat> Come on, Magnus! I got it, Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> Magnus with Magnus. Magnus for Magnuson. There is an air of excitement. As most of the people in the Imperial City do not know what the surprise for the Imperial Prince is. The Imperial Prince has yet to be old enough to assume the throne of Empirica, as well as Stygia and all of Tarak in the name of the uh in, in the name of the Empire. Um the regent is the one who controls Empirica. And there is another 
warrior who is currently conquering and pacifying the continent of Stygia. That is probably where the true power lies. However, the mother of the state, the mother of the world, the, or the grandmother of the world, also the prince's grandmother, uh, might be a cagey old woman as well. There are politics, Ashoka, that you have not even, t even like, caught a whiff of or, like, even poked your toe into because these are the politics of power of this place. You know that there are thousands of other minor officials and other nobles between you and them and that you are unfortunately at this time still just a pawn, a tiny player in a tiny role in a tiny place. Uh, that is the conclave of Crimson Sands. Maybe Magnus in his bullheadedness will pull something off as you've concocted your scheme to try to blow up this boat that would otherwise sink the fortunes of this entire gladiatorial stable and cast into doubt what the point is of what you are doing here. Why, did, why were you trained in this skullduggery, in this secret cabal, to watch them fail? No, no. No, 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 to pick up the pieces. Magnus, alone in his chamber, prays to the god Kor to give him strength. Oh! He's excited and, and, are you afraid? Where's that fucking axe? Are no, man. Okay. No, we gotta Magnus is excited. Oh! Well, not yelling, but. To once again <laughs> be in the sands. No, not sands. The waves of the hippodrome. Flooded. Oh, it's going to be a grand battle. Yeah, Magnus is excited. There is a knock at Magnus's door early, early in the morning as a servant quietly comes up to you and says, Gladiator, Magnus? Yeah? It is time to join your men. I trust Gladly. that you have slept well. Um, may the old gods be with you. Okay. It always this, will be. The small... The small, nameless servant that will never have glory. His name will be forgotten when his children and maybe his grandchildren finally die. But you, Magnus, your your name could live in the uh, live and ring true throughout the centuries to come if you do pull off your great feats and somehow bring the conclave of of Crimson Sands to victory. So, um, just one minor question detail here, uh, Choka. How are we setting a blaze to the explosive thing again? <laughs> Don't worry. That's, that is Phineas's, Phineas, the drunk, the junkie. That's his <laughs> job. <laughs> All right, Magnus, you are brought with your, with your gladiator warriors, and I need to get um, a bunch of, uh, warrior tokens. Give me a second. Is there anything, um... Phineas the Junkie's got your back, can son. We, uh, can we give our guys, like, flasks of uh, fire... What's it called? We do not have the money for fire resistance for Al everyone. Alchemist fire? Uh, <laughs> your boat is covered with oil. No, round one. Fucking everybody. <laughs> one person right. just pulls one, right? Everybody just fucking... So here are your gladiators. Uh... Uh, Four, call five, it where six, at the uh, conversation layer. Seven, there we go. eight. Yeah, we're conversation. Eight, eight gladiators. You, Albus, and six, six of your best warriors. Then there should be nine other guys. And there should be nine backup nine guys. Oh, oh man, why would you? It took. That, it was like. Anyways, it was awesome. It is awesome. So we'll call Glo these. Looky, look. Uh, look at. <laughs> look at. Okay, give me. Let me. Let me read this for you. Let me read this for you. Cord. Let's see. Be strong, but do not use strength for wanton destruction. Be brave and scorn cowardice in any form. Not fighting is cowardice. Prove your might in battle to win glory and renown. How is this not Cord's thing? I didn't say it wasn't Cord's thing. Magnus! Magnus returns! Oil Magnus! Oil the Conclave! Like, like, like there's one of them has a horn. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, there's, there's, a, bunch of, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things as as your group is is chanting. 
is uh, Jane. Oh yeah, I, you've got a banner. There's a banner. I, I that do that banner. In. Hold the banner like yep. at the, like at the tip. <laughs> like, yep. like walk more like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys march through the streets. Um, you you do have some guards that are that are following you, uh, following yeah. you. But if you decided to turn on your guards, the guards probably wouldn't be able to to stand. Like, yeah, I'm assuming the guards are more to keep other people from getting to the gladiators. Yeah, uh, the guards do clear the way as you make your way towards uh, the arena moors and beside it, flooded. Where, where there are teeming crowds cheering and jeering as almost everyone in this, this city of several million wish that they had tickets or ways into the arena. The place is a buzz. Make way for the Conclave of Crimson Sands! And somebody yells ahead, ahead of you and, and uh, the, the, the crowds are parting as, as uh, there's marching and, and singing as many gladiator, gladiator stables are making their way uh, towards the games. There are a lot of drunk people because the games have been going on for a few days. This is the final culmination. This is the final battle to honor the, to honor the Imperial Prince and his birthday. <laughs> I got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ticket. All right, it's so a big boss man is somewhere in the stands. As you uh, are, go in once again, <laughs> Magnus, into the bowels of the the gladiatorial arenas, and takes and to the, a, takes the dirt, starts and puts it uh, on the like, side of his face, like. Shh. Okay, so you grab you grab some street dirt and just rubbing it rubbing it over the side of your head. Uh, it looks all crazy and shit. <laughs> Some of the others are also doing that, but you go down into the bowels of the arena to wait. The bowels of the arena stink. Magnus, you know that there's an entire maze down here, like a labyrinth underneath the three great structures of the of the Tricoliseum. Let's not go down there. This is where the paladins and the monks of the Unchained, um, where their stable lives. Like, they debase themselves and live basically in the sewers. What a shitty fill in the... Just fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots, lots of training? Uh, yeah, yes. no, these, these are the... What they're talking about is... Um, the, they're the super cool badasses. The Brotherhood of the Unbroken Bond, also known as the Unshackled. They are honor-bound um, paladins and monks... Uh, they tend to be members of the Five Phase God, and um, uh, they are allowed to go around the the, the cities and towns, um, and even outside of the city, unchained, because they're trusted. You are you are brought underneath the area, and you can actually hear the the swirl of the water and some splashing, and there seems to be some event going on um, that you don't get to see. <laughs> But others do as they go into the arena. Phineas has already handed out the uh, the bladder bags to all of your soldiers, and there's one tucked into the uh, the leather underneath the leather uh, uh, breastplate uh, that each of you are wearing. Magnus, what armor are you wearing today? Um, uh, how much will a chain shirt send me back in terms of a in terms of difficulty to swim? A minus one. I think it's just a minus one armor check penalty. Okay, uh, so I don't expect a lot of big waves here. It's not a fucking wave pool. <laughs> uh, is it Master Arc Chain Shirt? Yep. Uh, then, minus one. Okay. Um, so you've got your own Master Arc Chain Shirt and your Master Arc Buckler. Okay. Yeah, I have a... Yeah. Okay, let me just confirm I have a 10 swim. <laughs> Let's confirm that shit before I... Okay, yeah, we're good. I have a, I have a 9 swim, so 8 with this thing. No right. buckler, right? No. So I'm going to copy you and your men off to another map called uh, Coliseum Ship Fight. Hey, Foxfire, it is time. Uh, I don't know Nix what to do. is smuggled in. Yeah, um, nobody stops to to check a bird like on somebody's shoulder, uh, or he wears it in the backpack. Where and is the uh, Where is the um, uh, the keg of? It's in my lunch basket. Okay. What does a steak man eat for lunch, you ask? Give me a stealth or a disguise. That's right, Drake. Tripe and stinky That's cheese. Right, Drake. What a, what a, <laughs> the steak man has a, like a basket of raw tripe that he's bringing with him. <laughs> oh, so you've got, you've got some stinky fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, give me a, give me a stealth or a, give me a stealth or a, uh, a disguise check or something something related to. I will do to... a disguise. Don't fail me, buddy. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, the guard that looks at it kind of, kind of like pokes it, pokes a stick into the fish and kind of goes, Ugh. and then he looks at you and your kind of smile with your snake fangs, gotta, and, and he just assumes that this is the slop that you eat. Move along, scum, is what he says to you. Ah, <laughs> oh, humans and their have a good day, sir. Right. <laughs> All right. So Ashoka, you go into this place, and there's teeming throngs of fifty thousand people cheering. As you notice that there there are a couple of conjurers that are flying through the air. And you can see people swimming around in panics trying to get to these small floating docks. And there are sharks in the water. Big, angry sharks. I did not think about... Well, you see... All right, so the plan B was you just sort of jump in the water and play dead? You notice that one of the conjurers is actually pointing towards a platform and this massive uh, great, uh, a great white shark goes, goes, um, uh, goes swimming right up to the platform, butts into it its head and spills three what look like common That's, criminals into the water. And a bunch, of, a bunch of other little sharks are going after them now and water just starts to fill with blood and everyone cheers. Oh, there goes the idea of swimming up to their boat. Oh, oh you can see one guy, one guy like uh, out of three, trying to get to another, get, trying to get to another platform. You notice that he's not wearing the same colors as the others are, and they're like waving him in. But once he starts to get up, one guy shivs him and pushes him into the water, and 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 you notice a bunch of cheering. Purple side wins. <sighs> <laughs> what a shitty life! <laughs> uh, you can see that the imperial box is not um, has not been like there are some people in it, but you don't see the prints yet. Um, you do see that there are ships, many of which are covered in tarps right now. Like it's hard to disguise the 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 uh, it's hard to disguise the, uh, the 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 show, but the the ships are off to the side. They're all kind of like okay. roped together. <clears throat> All right, Marty, this map is so awesome, I have to nerd it up. So I am measuring a dude. A dude is about 10 feet tall. This thing is uh, about 210 feet across. Right. And where, is, is... Where, is, um, uh, where is Ashoka going to go sit? Uh, Ashoka is going to sit with <clears throat> Phineas. Um, okay. Uh, and it'll be... Preferably, kind of in the. Like I'm assuming the further further up, the worse you are, or like what's yeah, the... the further up, you worse you are. But um, there are also some boxes that are further up, so it's 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 sort of a mix. This probably feels like the dredges, and that's actually. Phineas says, "Why don't we try to sit close to Prentice at least? We've got good seats." Fair enough. Okay. Lead, lead the way. The the group of you find Prentice, who is who is dressed in his finest. He's got peacock feathers coming off of him and floofy things and the and the, the curled frills at the end of his uh at the end of his attire. His his attire still looks like it's out of a closet from from fashion like a hundred years ago. He's got funny little boots with bells on them. The curls uh, curls at the end of his feet, leggings that are too tight against his uh against his older man frame. But Aged a big cod. Hold out a piece of fish to him. <laughs> I thought I told you to stay away. Now, if they are going to be good masters, says Theodore, perhaps they should at least sit nearby. Besides, you won't want to miss anything, um, sir. You could have them do the running for you. Very well. Just keep that stinking fish away from me. You disgust me. I always knew that your customs were wrong. They're wrong, I tell you. Of course, sir. Uh... Oh, think a poop. What was that? Um, nothing, says Phineas. <laughs> 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 it's just a stupid bird. You're stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> it's now biting at Phineas's ear. He's like, stop that. <laughs> 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 All right, so they they bring you a little bit uh, a little bit up high, and I'm going to show you some of the people that you that you pass and see. You can see. Um, there is a comely woman by the name of Diva Vess, who who basically is like 
six foot three shapely like somebody took a like super like an Amazonian princess supermodel from some other world and kind of plopped them in amongst a bunch of people that are like averaging you know five foot eight in height and she is down and talking to a bunch of the 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 guys in purple and purple sashes that just won their fight it's and, bayonetta <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is just representation of where they are, and so that we can that we can uh, 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 show them. So there's there's a diva Vess who's talking to the people in the, with the purple sashes that won. Apparently, there are a bunch of criminals that basically won their court case because they survived the shark arena, um, or that may have won their uh, right to join gladiatorial uh, the gladiatorial games. Um, or, or a stable. You can see Papa Devereaux! Papa Devereaux's in the stands. You can see that um, uh, Keyrop and Stone Ready are, um, are, are standing guard behind Papa Devereaux, uh, which, is the, uh, which is the big Nosrog and the GIF. Uh, Papa Devereaux is a very large man who is, uh, who's got this small entourage of, of Varks, which are small anteater-like guys. Um, they're kind of like kobolds in a different form. You could see he's in the stands, uh, looking at the uh, looking at the entourage. He has his gigantic umbrella. He seems to be like pasted in white paste, like the sun itself uh, is the enemy. It is a wonderfully sunny day, even though for it being in the uh, in the autumn uh, time period. Who else do you see? Oh, you sorry. see the High Pontiff Vicond de la Marcheneau. High up in, in the Imperial box. Let's see where the Imperial box is going to be. Um, we'll say it's way over here. So high up in the Imperial box, you can see um, the High Pontiff in his big hat. Um, he is is waiting for the, the games to go. Um, he is basically the head of the Church of the Five-Faced God. You can see the Commissioner is also nearby on a platform that's sort of built an overhanging. Uh, he is a pompous sort. He always uh, wears his uh, who always wears his uh, uh, his hair in a particular way, kind of in a in a, a fake white wig. So there's the high pontiff, and then there is the uh, the commissioner of games. Who else do we have here that are well to do's? Um. You manage to see that there is a large section of stands where there are soldiers. And that Grandmaster Braun stands, stands out with the soldiers. It looks like many of the soldiers have gotten tickets. Um, you know that you crossed to Grandmaster Braun uh, the other day. <laughs> Somebody crossed Grandmaster Braun. Yep. Ashoka was not involved. <clears throat> You see, sprinkled throughout the crowd, some of the leaders of the other... Um, of the other gladiatorial uh, stables, in particular the very, very powerful ones. You've got... You've got Devestra Sildra and her right-hand man, Denister the Raven. She is the queen of the ravens and the head of the Sildren house. Uh, and you notice that she's flanked by a bunch of armored elves. You can see the most scary because within a 10 foot circle, there seemed to be nobody sitting anywhere near him. Uh, it is this gargantuan uh, uh, orc, old in age, and he seems to have like actual spirits floating around him in this gruesome armor that looks like it was taken from, from the corpses of, of, of many dead, is High Chief Griscarl Gortusk. He is the head of the United Clans and keeps order amongst oh, the dwarves and the orcs alike. I know there's human that killed some of you guys. <laughs> you can give me a knowledge local if you want to know more about uh, High Chief Chris I want to know more about the guy who might be upset. Okay. 21. All right, what can I tell you about the Gris Carl? He's looking to the left. <laughs> Always to the left. <laughs> Until it's the right. <laughs> yeah, but it's happy to be the right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the High Chief of Clans, or the High Chief of Chiefs, Gris Carl Gor Gortusk, is, a, um, is an inscrutable and powerful orcish warlock who strikes p fear 
in the Imperium, United Clans, and any who cross his path. Apparently he is old in that he was part of a massive orc horde that was defeated by the Imperials, with whom he struck a deal upon his defeat. He would be propped up as the sole leader of the United Clans and be allowed to continue his strange religious practices and magic unhindered. The Imperium agreed, reluctant at first, but soon began to enjoy the pacification of a multitude of orc and dwarven clans under his purview. And the tithes of slaves and gladiators continue to be given by the clans as tribute to the Empire. He is a 21. He's probably a, a powerful spellcaster. And there are all sorts of rumors of like weird religious stuff that... Like Blood Rager? Stuff like that? You, you don't know beyond that. Pick a fight with him and then Marty will have to nail down his build. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it to uh, me. We're talking about like he, his spells are beyond what you guys could even like think of casting at this point. He's... Uh, quite cold. possible. Quite possible he is. Luke okay. Shows up and punts him across the stands. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, and then who else? Throw, like, yeah, so this is here. basically Marty introducing Fuck mid and all. high level guys, so... Here's, uh, here are the dudes that you aspire to... Beat the crap To be out. like, or be with, or to beat, or whatever. <laughs> Standing near... The others, there seems to be some important people in the middle is Slave Lord Pompilius Papura. He is the most successful Slave Lord and owns probably many, many gladiators or, is a, or, or at one time is said to have owned every slave in, in, the, uh, in, in the Imperium. That, of course, is a lie, um, but he is a rich, uh, he's a rich slave owner that all slave uh, masters aspire to be like. The High Warden, who when he appears near the box of the Imperials, people boo. He is the guy who's in charge of all the um, police force and prisons in uh, in the Imperial City. He owns <laughs> his people own a lot of uh, uh, like some of the worst places that a gladiator can be is owned by the city because the city doesn't look after their gladiators. They're treated like dirt, um, and and people don't like him. Like on both sides, he's he's very unpopular, and and to the point where the Imper like even the Imperials in this place, boo him as he comes out. And there's him in his funny hat. Uh, where is he? There he is. There is the High Warden. He nervously sits down and, and adjusts his rod of power and sits down and is, is just not... Um, he has a slightly effeminate way to him. He's wearing earrings, like kind of like big pearl kind of uh, earrings that are jangly off of pearl him. Power of five. And he's got a nice ermine <laughs> coat. Like he likes fine things, which doesn't help when, you know, you have to portray a man who is the head of the order of the town. Um, you see Captain Sol Zoraster, uh, who a cagey old pirate or privateer that now owns the hilt. He, he actually goes and sits down beside the High Chief Griscarl and is having a conversation with him. Like, he is not afraid of sitting near the orc. That means I'm not afraid either. Yeah, that's the guy that Magnus used to work with. The crowd rises up! There's, there's cheering! As coming into the Imperial box is uh, Ryson de la Cova. He is the regent of Empirica. He is the one that rules in the prince's stead while the prince is still not of age. <laughs> he puts up his hand to the crowd and, smir and smirks a bit. <laughs> dressed in imperial, in imperial garb finery. <laughs> Oh Snape, you dressed up so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> and he sits down. The, the people, people like him. Like he's he's uh, he's um, he's doing that. Um, big big boss Nemesis apparently is sitting beside uh, <laughs> Papa Devereux. Uh, Papa Devereux seems to like being around people who are um, uh, anthropomorphics. He really likes anth anthropomorphics. Uh, what else? Uh, so yeah, there there does appear to be some uh, popularity of the regent. Like they cheered when he came into the box. Who is next, Papa? What's his face? Papa. Devers? There is. Oh, he's seen. You can see him in his own in his own box. 
Uh, he's wandering in the crowd, and you can see people coming up to him. It is Legis, the fan of man. Legis is a <laughs> is a powerful private citizen of great wealth who knows everything about anything about gladiators. He also is rumored to be able to take over the bodies of any fat man. Like he he lives in he lives in fat men is the like there's some weird mythology around it. But you could you could see that there are people that he's sitting in his uh he's sitting in his box. He has a replica of the of the um the arenas and little figurines of of like various gladiators and he's got some servants and he plays with this thing while the fights are going on. You can see him picking up a boat and putting it down into the um uh most definitely need to get on that guy's good side because I'm pretty certain he knows what all the fights are about before everybody else knows what all the fights are about. He's the fan of man. He's also the fan of probably Dude. mayonnaise and a few other things. <laughs> <just saying. laughs> Last name okay. sandwich. As stable masters, you guys are making your way over to the lesser stable masters uh, areas, and you're actually sitting close to High Chief Chris Carl and Captain Saul Zaraster and the others. So Prentice Pennywise goes and waves to the crowd. Nobody responds. He sits down anyways. Um, <laughs> <That ain't> his... <laughs> uh... Uh, you better pull this fucking thing off or I'm a dead man. <laughs> yep. Right now the crowd is cheering and jeering as there are three guys that are, <sighs> And who will win the race against the Sharks? You can see some people trying to swim across. Who will win the prize? <sighs> sharks are being summoned to chase down these swimmers that have absolutely no chance. Why, why? <laughs> why what? Well, I'm just trying to figure out why you'd be like, yeah, send me in there, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I am the coach. I'm going in. Can't be my helmet. <laughs> All right. There's this really nervous halfling. You kind of look behind yourself, and you can see that there's a man dressed in black and this really, really nervous halfling that's like hiding behind one of the seats, picking, uh, peeking his way out. <laughs> All right. Oh, this guy. <laughs> if that's not a vampire <laughs> or a ghoul or something, <laughs> you you catch him, Ashoka, as you turn around and look at him. He's actually looking at you. Do I recognize him? Um, knowledge, nobility. Seven. No. He does have the look about him, though, that he is not from this world. Like his dress is different. Oh, what's his name? Oh, is there a Van Imp in there? Ashoka's eye just twitches. Okay. Is there a Van, he knows uh... more about me than I know about him. I don't like this. Oh, well, there's a Van. <laughs> there's a Van in there. <laughs> I, I did peek at his name there. All right, we need we need a we need a token for Van Imp. <gasps> Which is, oh. which is your master, Ashoka? Uh, how old is my master? Is Van Imp from the Imperium? Yep. Oh, that son of a bitch. Uh. Oh. oh they're all connected. Mind uh, blown. <laughs> what kind of what kind of token are we looking for? Um, some sort of wizardish kind of noble. Guy. Oh, never mind. I got him. I got him. Oh, I could use some food right now. Who's running around doing... Who's making these? They're awesome, like, aren't they? <laughs> they are awesome. <laughs> Who's making them? <laughs> Who's doing, like... Civil War, Renaissance era, military portraits of stars. All right, so you see 
Vogel von Krakenstein sitting down with uh, Helmut van Imp. Helmut van Imp is a very powerful man indeed. Strange that he's not up in the Imperial box, however. Maybe he's just come down here to have a chat. Um, slumming it. He's slumming it maybe a little bit. Perhaps he's used to slumming it because he's in charge of the conquest of, of Stygia. He's not from this world, but he's a, he's a military general who is currently waging a war, and he's come here for the prince's birthday. You know the other characters that are going down the road of sorrow? It's he's at the top of the military that is that has caused their demise. Ah. You know, Ashoka, that his pull comes in different parts of the Imperium. Like, he has influence off-world. Yeah. He is... not to be dicked around with, at least not directly. <sighs> you see at least five wizards that, are, that look like that they, they've been at war that are kind of sitting in rows behind him and keeping watch. Like, he has his own security force. Oh. Stands. You, sh you <laughs> should move. You should move to the shitty part of the stands. Well, no. Phineas. Phineas should move to the shitty part of the stands because he's. What it's it's rumored stands. one day Helmut van Imp will. He's the Grand Duke of Stygia, that he will one day receive the title of Victory Prince, which is the highest that you could, the highest honor that you can achieve in the Imperium without being of Imperial blood. Like, you are a prince through your victory deeds. You, you won... Lapdog. Apparently then, only upon becoming victory prince that you are granted an audience with the undying emperor himself. Praise be to Ooh. his... Praise be to his name. Does Van Imp want to assassinate the, uh... You're thinking of the plot of Hero, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, nah, nah. Okay, so Quid is you notice Vogel Vogel's like not ignore is he's, he's ignoring you now like once he's helmet has sat yep. down beside him. In fact, he stood okay. up. Uh, and, Ashoka's and... not looking at the, the powerful man. Not Christopher Walken. <laughs> Christopher Walken. <laughs> Christopher Walken's all about there the you go. There you go. Know the law, yes, and we shall we shall have victory, peasants. Citizens! And you notice that uh, Sir Pennywise is throwing silver coins into the crowd below. There's a small <laughs> mob of people going after the silver coins, and you can see some guards coming out to try to keep the peace. Yeah, are, are there any people you want to go and talk to while you guys are waiting for the prince to show up? Watching these poor folks that are not... Oh, there's one guy who makes it three quarters of the way by before three sharks swim up to him and start eating him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the water turns... Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh. uh, People are cheering. <laughs> um, There's a whole bunch of people out of our weight class. Yeah, I'd rather be down with my men. Rather than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're safer, actually. <laughs> okay, four, Im right four imperial magi appear, and the crowd begins to um, the crowd begins to cheer as these reddish armored warriors. You know that these are basically magises and fighters. They have magic. <gasps> They they come marching they come marching out. You notice that Rison de la Cova as well as uh, so he's the Grand Duke of Imp uh, he's the Grand Duke and Regent of Empirica. The oh, High Warden rises. Shit. The High Pontiff rises. Star as, Wars concept art. As That's these four shit. Imperial guards come out and and basically, they. The Imperium, the inner Imperium, doesn't use guns so much because that's where all the magic of the Imperium is. And these guards, you know, are magi. They they are wearing armor, and you they can cast spells. Uh, we uh, there is an old woman dressed in in black and finery. She is the grandmother of of basically of Tarak, 
Imperial <coughs> Grandmother Evelyn comes out and uh, and takes a seat. She 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 um, allows her hand to be held briefly by uh, uh, by the by the regent, and she sits down beside him. <laughs> we uh, we need to. We are on the wrong part of this. People are chanting now, like like the, the the crowd dies down a little bit as the as there's no more activity in the imperial box. Um, and people are now chanting squid, squid, squid. Squid. And you can, this this float, you can see this float. You can see this float. You can see this floating platform where there, there's a bunch of like there's about a dozen or so men with daggers and ropes and that sort of thing, like looking around as 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 this one conjurer stands up from the conjurer's box and just flies over the top. Like they're flying wizards. He begins to chant, and you can see this weird squiddy symbol comes out of him. Like maybe they're they're wrapping illusions over top of summoning to make it look more flashy. But yeah, this giant squid begins to <laughs> begins to appear in the water and starts to attack the men that are on uh, that are on the floating platform. One guy gets wrapped up and pulled into the water. There's still sharks <sighs> swimming around from Marty, previous I summons. Hate the Imperium. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you volunteered. Uh... Oh, I'm fine squid. with going What's to the squid. scale squid. of this squid. of this squid. map? Squid. Uh, I don't know. So I think there's little people. So um... it, it's almost like every ten square is ten feet. Or... Yeah, yeah, ten foot squares. Uh, so squid. thirty feet away. I don't want really powerful spellcasters being thirty feet away when we start busting off visibilities on familiars and shit. <sighs> You can see one guy get lifted up by two tentacles, and then a squid beak comes out of the water and is now chewing on him, and there's blood everywhere. People are cheering at this. Uh, Ashoka takes a big bite of stinky fish. Okay. <laughs> like a big bite of stinky fish. <laughs> All right. You're Actually, very you're disgusting, aren't you, Ashoka? You would, you would says, says swallow Esteban. the whole thing, dude. <laughs> Dislocate your jaw. You'll... Uh, sneaky snake! Sneaky snake! Phineas, would you like fin some? Fin Phineas actually, like, is talking to his familiar. Well, you're a, you're a bird. You're a bird. Uh, Ashoka's going to reach over Theodore with some stinky fish. Oh, it's disgusting. You're getting getting all this this, this nonsense all over me. Blah, blah. I think some of it went into my wine. He's actually getting up. Move out of my way, Phineas. You're going to get more wine. Okay, Ashoka's going to scoot over. Yep. Ha ha ha! Look at the squid! Look at it! Look at it undulate! It's strangely making me aroused, says Sir, Sir Prentice Pennywise, who was reaching in to, like, throw throw more coins, but he, you realize he, he's out. He kind of, like, tips his coin purse upside down. Tosses the coin purse to the bottom. Or to, to it's the... not even the main show! This is a warm-up act! <laughs> You know, there's Nick's like, like going and nipping at the back of of Sir Prentice Pennywise's uh, wig. He's <laughs> kind of eating little hairs off of the wig. <laughs> I think it's like a thought about the hairs back on the boat. <laughs> yes, he says. He looks tired. We need to move closer, or at least away. I'm sure the bird will be able to go all the way down there. <clears throat> Conceal your casting. We've got a huge crowd. Who who cares? There are very powerful mages thirty feet away. He's not looking around. It's like a like a like a <laughs> don't be so obvious. Do you have a potion for that shit? <clears throat> All right, lead the way. He says, like he he doesn't argue with he you. He doesn't see the threat, but yeah, uh, we are going to go over here okay that, so you get that, up that feels ah that's right away. go down with the plebs this is pentas wise i've got all this room to myself yes, as it uh, should, you should be you should stretch out i will i shall 
I thought hey. I told you to leave that stinky fish away. Off with you. Glory will be mine and mine alone. Mm. Right. Uh, I didn't move, dude. Oh, I know. Go. So we're basically going to come her. And hey, you see Theodore gonna... going and getting more wine, and you guys go move away. Yeah, we're gonna. You do feel the too... gaze of some of the wizards as you you were getting up, and maybe they're looking at you with maybe arcane uh, where's sights. The, uh, you actually the saw one wizard like like there was like a flash in his eyes. He was using some sort of some sort of. He uh, was detecting. On you. Oh, yeah. he's, he's... Yep. Yeah, the, uh, the, the the jakes the jakes are in the interior okay um we're gonna go into the jakes and then come out okay so but... you go into the, like these areas where yeah. the okay um into the jakes and then we're gonna come out over here or over here or like on the other side over here because it seems like all the important shit's over here but that just might be a, a nature of how the map is drawn <laughs> some wizard casts a spell and you can hear this um you can hear drumming. People are now cheering, ah, waving little banners. Some of them have horns and whistles, little noise makers. People are stamping their feet along with the drumming. <clears throat> and a clear clarion voice calls out across the um across the way oh we forgot we forgot one guy magnus no 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 <laughs> magnus the magnificent level 19 <laughs> oh, fuck, uh, yeah sitting sitting near the commissar is uh pitch <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's got his... Oh, yeah. <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> this drumming, it reaches a crescendo, like the whole place feels like it's going to shake apart. And then it stops. And it's this tremendous, uh, like, vocalization trick. Everyone's, like, like getting ready to cheer. You actually hear <laughs> Pitch kind of go... <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. There's there's a bit of laughter. <clears throat> the co the commissioner of games, Count Javier Hardwil, steps forward. Citizens, nobles, and imperials, craftsmen, soldiers, and slaves. Subjects are we all to his undying emperor and his whims. We have gathered here on this auspicious day, this fine autumnal august elven summer day. What he means by elven summer is that it's a particularly warm day in the fall. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Alrighty. We are gathered here to pay tribute to Empire, to pay tribute to our Imperial Prince on his seventh birthday. This is the first great and grand games that he will preside over. Please join me. And giving your salute and love to our Imperial Prince. All sorts of horns going off and drumming as... as good time uh, for the ant hall. Phineas, uh, uh, you kind of snap him out of it and he, he, yep. he feeds the little potion of ant hall to the bird. The bird drinks it down. Oh, strong. Strong bird. Mighty bird. Okay, we'll... Get the, we'll get our our boom ready. <laughs> okay, the imperial prince, um, wreathed in a crown, in a laurel of flowers, wearing dark dark clothing, um, fancy comes comes out. The crowd goes nuts. Apparently, they like their leader, or at least the ones that have gathered in this place of carnal horror and uh, this slaughter ground. 
these these fake seas of death are cheering wildly and madly as the small imperial prince, seven year old, comes out. There's a bit of trepidation at first as he as he walks out amongst the uh, the imperial magi who salute as he goes out. His uh, his imperial grandmother basically is is clapping as well and turns. Um, uh, every other uh, noble in the house is now bowing. At least those up in the. Uh,